Now, back to Dave Santi Muller from the KJR Studios. Sonics Gate. Jason Reed, what do I call it? Like the creator, the director, the producer, you did it all, right? Yeah, a little bit of everything, yeah. you know, director, but there was a whole team of us that worked to put the film together. Now, so. I got to ask you, is there like something going on where you're like not cutting your hair until this movie makes like a million dollars or something? Wait, what's going on here? Um, you know, uh, I've got a Squatch impression over here, for God's you sake. You know, I, I, I'll just say that it is in memory of Squatch, the film's in memory of Squatch, okay. and I'm just trying to, to make sure people <laughs> don't forget that the Sasquatch is right. gone now, too. I love it. Well, we're on TV now on Comcast. So people can see what you look like. Well, first of all, great job with the film. Uh, it's been out for a while. You and I haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. I thought from an artistic perspective, you did a really phenomenal job. I actually was pretty floored, to be honest with you, by how good this film was. When somebody said, ah, guy's making a documentary, it's like, ah, whatever. You know, it'll, it'll be like you know anything you watch in high school or college film class. But it was really well done, so much to a point now where it's being shown all over the country, including New York, where you just got back from. And now the word is that you just won an award. Is that right? Tell us about that. Yeah, so I got in from New York last night at midnight and uh, woke up this morning at 6 a.m. to my roommate yelling, we won, we won, and we won a Webby Award, which is wow. essentially the Academy Awards of the Internet, and we won Best Online Sports Film. Great. And so, uh, you know, we spent the week in New York promoting the film, and this was just a great way to come back to Seattle. How did you end up in New York? Did they invite you? Do you call them? How does that happen? Well, we uh, got hooked up with Kenny Mayen from ESPN, actually. Good. and yep. uh, he Who's tried, from here, by the way. from yep. here, yep. and he tried to set us up with the Tribeca Film Festival, but because we released the film for free online, they said, no, Go, we want the world premiere. Right. Well, he helped us book a theater there, and then once we booked the theater, we just got the word out to all the press, and outside the lines picked it up, and and we did a bunch of media while we were out there about the film. What are you hearing as far as reaction? I mean, most people that watch this that I talk to say, "God, this just reminds me of how badly we got jacked." by the NBA, by the politicians, by Howard Schultz. When you go outside of the vacuum that is Seattle, do you get a sympathetic tone from people? What do people say about it? Yeah, I mean, we were blown away both with the response down in L.A. We went down there to see a Laker game and told people about the film. And in New York, people are extremely supportive because they didn't know what happened. This right. this issue got swept under the rug nationally. And that's the whole reason we made this film and released it free on the Internet, to get it out to more people. And, and yes, they're sympathetic. They just didn't realize everything that went into the Sonics leaving. And some people don't even know that the Oklahoma City Thunder used to be the Seattle Supersonics. Right. So we're opening people's eyes just to that fact, let alone all the other steps that went into how we lost our team. Well, outside of uh, letting people know what happened, which I know for us is important to let people know that, hey, this wasn't about a bad fan base or no history or nobody caring. I think in the end, a lot of people were apathetic because of the way they were treated by Clayton Bennett. And it's hard to support a team that you know was on the way out the door. But let's face it, man, this was a Sonic City first, second, and third 40 years of history. So letting people know what happened is a big deal and I think is important to all of us. But what about the next step now? I mean, all right, Fine. So people know we got robbed. People know we got jacked. People know the Sonics are in Oklahoma. Well, that doesn't change the fact that the Sonics are in Oklahoma. So what about moving forward now? What do we do, and how can this movie help that cause? Well, I think that we have two battles going on here. We have a national battle, which is to let the rest of the nation know what happened because there's still a large part of the country that does not realize what happened and get the message out that no team is truly safe now in this right, modern era. Right. But we also have a local battle to fight. We have to get, come together as a city behind people like Steve Ballmer or people like who, who are developers who can make uh, – uh, the things happen that are necessary on either a privately financed arena level or with public assistance. And so, but by waging those two battles simultaneously mm. and keeping the issue around, as long as we don't give up the issue and yeah. let people know that Seattle is an NBA city, we want basketball back and we won't go away until we get it. And if we send David Stern and the NBA that strong message, then they're just going to have to do something about it eventually if they want <laughs> us to be silenced. Well, I mean, I guess that's the question is, do they really want us to be silenced? I mean, you know, so what? So you're on outside the line. So you're, 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 you're trying to humiliate the NBA. Well, the NBA is still functioning, maybe not at the level they want to function at, but how, how big a deal do you think the grassroots effort really can be in regards to getting a team back? I really think if, if we send the strong message to, to the commissioner and the NBA that we want a team back, that will not hurt the cause. We tried, like, not hurting their feelings and by taking a settlement deal. Oh, we'll allow – you to come back. Now it's time to yeah. let them know that we want NBA basketball back and we're willing to do what it takes, at least from a fan and citizen perspective, to bring the Sonics 
Sonics back to Seattle. So by not giving up the fight and continuing to spread the word what happened here, mm-hmm. we can we can make a difference, I feel. Well, like. and let's not forget, I want to I want to just correct you on one thing. We didn't take any settlement. That idiot in the mayor's office took the settlement. All right. You 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 weren't a part of that. He wasn't a part of that. He that guy was I was nobody in this room was a part of that. And that's the one part of that documentary that actually just drives me nuts is watching that press conference that one day, which I don't know if you were there or not. I watched it live on TV. Right, and it's a good thing I wasn't there because I would have been arrested. I mean, I'm watching all these city council people laughing up on stage, blah, 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 like that day was a good day, and I kind of wish I was there to call them out, but I just don't trust these politicians, Jason, as much as you can throw them, and I think any idea about talking to this guy or talking to that guy or going to Olympia or going wherever to get any political support is a waste of freaking time. These people are not basketball fans, they're not sports fans, and they have no idea what they're doing or how to solve this problem in my opinion if this is going to happen it's going to have to be done privately the whole way i I agree that a private uh, arena solution perhaps in bellevue or wherever the money is and the spaces to get done is makes the most sense at this point and we need be we need to come together with behind steve ballmer and whatever whatever developers want to get this done and and try to make this happen so we can attract an nba team and an nhl team Mm -hmm. to this market because this sports city is lacking something and it's nba basketball Basketball, and we miss it. The hardcore hoops fans out there miss it. All through the winters, we had nothing this year, uh-huh. and we want to bring that back and, and restore the Seattle SuperSonics legacy. So you're not a Husky basketball fan per se. That's 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 not enough for you. I mean, it, it's great. It was the, <laughs> they you went know, to the Sweet was, 16. The Sweet 16 was great, right. but I'm talking NBA hoops. Yeah, yeah, I'm I talking know, the I best know. of the best. LeBron James coming to town, watching him boon boon against yeah. him. See, all for that me, uh, the way to do it uh, because there is, and I'm sure that look, you know what I've said over the years and. Uh, months is uh, and Jason Reed by the way from Sonic Skate is with us is that I love the passion. I mean, you're crazy. This guy's like ADD times 50 over here. I love the uh, the energy and the passion that I'm seeing from this guy. There's just not enough of you, man. You know? I mean, Brian Robinson's great. Steven Pyatt over at Save Our Sonics is unbelievable. There's just not enough of you guys out there, and I'm sensing a lot of apathy towards the NBA right now. I bring up the NBA in this show when people threaten to turn off the radio. I think the road to go down is the NHL road. You know, pump up the NHL, sell the NHL to Seattle, get an NHL ready arena and then bring the NBA through the back door. Yeah, I mean, bottom line is if we build a new arena, it has to be NHL ready because we don't know what team is going to return to Seattle first. Is it going to be an NHL team? Is it going to be a basketball team? The yeah. bottom line is this community needs a large arena. I mean, imagine Microsoft could have their conferences there. We could attract big conventions. We could attract all kinds of great concerts and not have to go down to Key Arena or the Tacoma Dome to see these shows that should be at a state-of-the-art arena. Yeah. It's not yeah. just about basketball, and it's about the community and sports and bringing entertainment and people together in one place. And that's an important thing for this community. The, uh, the quote we played from Sherman Alexi coming in there uh, has been a big debate for a lot of people, uh, including Sonic fans, about do you want to do this to somebody else? You know, I mean, really, I mean, the, the animosity that I've got for the people of Oklahoma who have done nothing to me, but I can't, I can't stop hating them, by the way, for the fact that they ripped off my team and Kevin Durant was second in the MVP voting this year, which just kills me. I don't want to do that to somebody else, but I may not have a choice in the when it's all said and done. The NBA is not going to expand. They're nowhere near ready for expansion right now. So if you want a team, whether it be Sacramento, Memphis, Milwaukee, whatever, are you prepared, Jason, as a basketball fan, to rip off somebody else's team the way our team was ripped off? Well, I mean, obviously that's the, the quandary we're all in, but bottom line is we want NBA basketball back in Seattle. The NBA has set a very dangerous precedent here. Mm-hmm. They've said that no team is safe, no matter 41 years of history, no matter their connection to the community. And so if that's the rules that we have to play as sports fans now, it's them who set this up and allowed this to happen, and we're going to have to do it. Now, one point to make is there is a difference between stealing a team that's been there 41 years and, for, for, for instance, the Memphis Grizzlies. They have no playoff appearances. They used to be in the Northwest, right. in Vancouver. Yeah. They moved to Memphis. And so it's, it's Not different. the history that we've got. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not the rich yeah. history. And uh, bottom line is we need to restore this history in Seattle and get an NBA team. And if that's what it takes, I'd say that it's the NBA's fault for making us sports fans uh, – 
pitted against each other. All right, sonicsgate.com, right? Dot, dot org. Dot org, thank you. Sonicsgate.org, and the movie's online. You can watch it for free. You can watch the whole movie yep. for free, two hours. Uh, sonicsgate.org. There's tons of extra features up on the website. As far into the issue as you want to delve and learn, it's it's up there. So. Well, we got a couple copies. You want to give away two copies right yeah, now on DVD? Yeah, let's give away two copies. We'll give away two copies right now. We'll just go first two callers at 286-9595. If you want your own copy of Sonicsgate on uh, DVD, uh, and Jason will even sign the damn thing for you. How's that sound? Yep. Uh, give us a call right now. We'll get you set up. All right, listen, anything you need, ser- seriously, anything you need down the road, fighting this fight, getting the word out, whatever, uh, this show is here for you, baby. Just let us know, right? Great. Thanks a lot, Softy. Thanks for having me on, and we'll, we'll keep up the battle to bring the Sonics back. No problem. Great to see you, man. Appreciate right, it. Thanks. Get a haircut, by the way. That's Jason Reed from sonicsgate.org at 1233. We're going to talk more about the Terrence Jones saga with Evan Daniels from scout.com next on KJR. KJR.